Um, so we have a little bit of time left, and I just want to open the, um, the floor to any questions that you might have. Please feel free to direct them to any member of the, of the panel. Is this on? Good. Uh, great panel. Great, great discussion. Uh, thank you very much to the organizers. Tony, I, I have a, a question for you. Fascinating results. What was the role of concentration among the depositors? You kind of alluded to it. And it get back, gets back to Elena's issue of stock price versus deposits. Because I've been around a few of these venture capitalists, and you look at their Twitter, I mean, they, it's everybody's there. And they can tweet out, you know, so if you're less concentrated, maybe this is a hypothetical, it's less concentrated, what would the impact be? Uh, yeah, I do, I do think that's a hypothetical, um, but it is something that, uh, I think we have a few words in the paper about it, um, and only 15 minutes to present, so um, it's, it is one of the things that is a bit distinctive about these banks that have their deposits from VC. There is an entire Twitter community that is highly connected. And I think what you mean by concentrated is concentrated in like highly connected with one another. Um, they all follow each other. Um, one tweet gets to all of them very quickly uh, when they start talking. So we think that's, that's a part of it. Um, I'm pretty not connected. Um, and when I posted this paper, uh, it, got, uh, it got retweeted many times as well. So like, um, I, I think it is still possible for someone who's not in like central to reach these concentrated parts of the network. But that's, that really is where a lot of the sharing happens. Steven. Thanks, Elena. Um, I have two questions, if I may. Um, one at a time. One question for Michael. Um, I'm wondering, so this supply-driven deposit inflows measure, um, I'm wondering what the role of competition is in the sort of mental model you have in mind. So um, I can see that you're thinking about banks and their depositors and the depositors' behavior. Um, but I guess the banks are disciplined also by competition in both what they're doing and by their depositors' choices, and I'm wondering how you're considering that, particularly in the design of the measure, which relies just on whether there was an increase or decrease in rates and not relative to other banks where the depositors might have obtained an account. Um, okay, that was question one. Okay, uh, thanks for the question. So we also addressed it in the paper. I didn't have enough time uh, to discuss it uh, here, but uh, one of the things that we do, we look also a bit more granular on a de deposit level, uh, county level deposit data and uh, the deposit rates, and we try to see it uh, all, uh, in, the, in this more granular data that our results still hold. And so we control for that, and we do the more granular analysis to show that the results are still holding. Now, more conceptually, you're right, and we also thought about it, the, the fact that eventually competition may affect the supply-driven deposit flow, and therefore this is one of the things, for example, that we also do with matching, and also to try to understand, to take the two very similar banks and to say, okay, if the, to try to distinguish and to, to find, uh, to identify this deposit, uh, in, external deposit flow, supply-driven deposit flow, and not the one that is driven by banks actively seeking for those deposits. Thanks, Michael. Okay, uh, and my second question is for Tony. Um, you're, you're talking more about this early, or these early tweets in January. I find them very interesting, and maybe they're uh, notable uh, and, and have something to do with the overall Twitter mechanism, how it will affect banking. But it seems to me that the potential problem with Twitter is misinformation just as much as it is information. And uh, I'm curious about basically why wasn't there a reaction in January? What were the preconditions that existed in March 9th that didn't exist in January and caused people to fail to react to that relevant and true information in January? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I think that's a good, uh, it's a good question, like why didn't they react to this like kind of prescient tweet? Um, I mean, I guess uh, if you were just kind of a depositor and you saw something by Raging Capital Ventures uh, without a name, uh, potentially that might not feel as uh, credible uh, at the time. Um, and it does take time to get into that community and that discussion. 
Um, I think the event that Elena highlighted sort of the night before when they were selling their available for securities, like that, that, that was a trigger event. Um, and it, it caused people to recall that information and that hit those networks and was shared very, very rapidly. Now your question about misinformation, um, I, I was surprised to, to not see sort of more markers of this like misinformation being shared. Uh, the other tweet that Elena projected uh, about Bank of America, you might have thought, Bank of America, did they have problems during this? Uh, they didn't really. Um, what, what had happened is there was like a, a sort of a phantom event that happened in January that like it looked like it was happening right then where people were like, are, are you missing money? Are you missing money? It was a video, a minute long video where people were like, without any sort of markers for time that was reshared a bunch during the SVB run. Um, it was kind of an example of misinformation, um, but it didn't dominate the conversation. I think like when I saw it uh, and rediscovered it, partly because we did the retweets analysis, uh, the reason I discovered it and re recognized it is I saw it at the time. And I was like, what is happening? Uh, and so I, I think that there is this sense that that's that is out there as well, and, and it, that is the concerning piece. If I may add, I think a lot of information was embedded in SVB price from December 22, right? So the stock price halved essentially uh, by March 1st, it essentially halved. I think the, the PR statement that they put that they, they need to raise equity the way it was framed, it raised concerns whether they're treating their losses from health to maturity security seriously. And are they having enough uh, hedges that they kind of sold in September? And that is less quantitative factors. It's more about, do I trust this management now? And that's where social media becomes crucial factor potentially. And I think that's a big component of um, Tony's work. More questions? Yes, thank you for the panel. Uh, just uh, touching on something that the first paper alluded, uh, which Acharya paper saying that increasing liquidity is policy induced. So uh, a question for you or anyone in the panel, how, how do you think about uh, deposit insurance given that policy can increase liquidity and has increased liquidity uh, in the last decade, twice, already uh, very significantly? Uh, thank you for the question. So uh, the, there are two, first of all, the reserves of the banks went up due, uh, also during this period. And also one may claim that in general, when the interest rate is low, so it drives the banks to take more risk and reaching uh, for ill behavior. So we also, um, we also treated it that, with that in the paper and we exclude those periods and we show that our results are more general and not are driven only by those periods. We, more conceptually, I think that you know, those periods, of course, help uh, get higher, res uh, higher magnitude because something is going over uh, then uh, specifically during those periods more than usual. But we still think that there is a, a long-term effect uh, that is not driven by specific periods of uh, due to specific changes in monetary policy or uh, other uh, regulatory changes. So just to add a little bit slightly different dimension, I think we're going to see a lot of debate um, over next, I don't know, year two, three, four, five, at least in academia, whether SVB crisis was a liquidity crisis or solvency crisis. Um, whether banning this, this big uh, social media shock, whether they could withstand by just writing out the maturity of their health to maturity securities. Um, and I think depending on what end of this, this debate you will end up, your view on the importance of high liquidity requirements will change. So it's, Last question. Sir? Uh, sure. So I'd like to take advantage of the composition of this conference and ask Skip a question. Um, can you expand upon, maybe just a bit, why you think mark to market accounting is misguided? Or mark to market accounting? Well, the, so for the bank balance sheet, everything's a financial asset. 
um, and we do calculate the fair value of all assets and liabilities, but to, to pull out just one and say, well, your investment securities have declined in value, and somehow that means something. So we want you to uh, reflect the value of the investment securities at market value, but you don't do that for d loans, which should uh, greatly dominate uh, the asset side of the balance sheet as compared to bonds, or, and um, you don't do it for deposits. So it, it, and it just doesn't seem to me to matter. And, and in fact, I would say capital doesn't matter that much. Um, you'll, you'll, the regulators in this room are not, which is most of you, are not going <laughs> to like that. But uh, my view would be that while we have a lot of capital, if we make 180 basis points on assets every year in profit, um, then if, if we had zero capital, uh, but we had strong asset quality, strong liquidity, uh, strong earnings, um, why would you care? Um, we'll be fine, right? Uh, we don't really need the capital unless something else is going wrong. That's, it's the cushion for something. So d decking the capital for um, depreciation of the bonds just doesn't make any sense to me. All right, well, thank you, Skip. Thanks to our entire panel. Please join me in thanking Elena, Michael, Sale, Tony, and Skip for their comments, for their papers this morning. Again, just a very interesting and, of course, very timely panel and, uh, and, and, and certainly appreciate the, uh, the questions as well.